What is an API, you might wonder? We'll look at this in today's episode of Getting APIs to Work, where we look at what an API is, or rather we look at what it's for. And we'll walk through a couple of examples and we build it up a little bit. So we start with the fact that an API is built for automation. And then we move on and talk about processes. So combining several APIs to build processes. And then we talk about innovation. So in the end, what we do today is we focus not so much on the technical aspects of APIs, but more on the value that they bring and why they are so popular today. I will link to some of the videos that I've did earlier about what an API is, which are a little bit more descriptive, I would say. And they, they fit the narrative, I think, in this video pretty well. So feel free to check those out. I will link them from this video and put the links in the description. Okay, let's get started. And as you may have noticed, my little examples of automation processes and innovation follow the API pattern. So you can easily remember those, I hope. So let's start with automation. And we will actually start with automation by looking at a real example. And the, I think the really interesting part there is how easy it is to build things like the one that I'm showing you now today. It took me really not more than a couple of minutes to build this. And of course, in reality, typically you will take a little bit longer to use APIs, but things are now at a level where using APIs has become really simple. So automation, my simple example really is very simple. Let's assume that what you want to do is you want to have like a reminder service where after a certain amount of time, you send a reminder to somebody because let's say they asked you to. Now, in reality, that is something you could do by putting that reminder on your phone, so to speak, right? Starting a timer. And then when your timer expires, you actually pick up the phone and you send a message to the person that wants to get the reminder. Now that is possible, but it is involves a manual process. Now let's look at a little bit of code. What I did here is I used an API by Twilio, a very popular API provider for sending short messages. And what I can do then is I can write a little bit of code a script that allows me to start the script simply with two parameters, one being the time to wait for and the other being the message to send. And then the script runs and sends the message. And the point here is the message is not sent by the script. Of course, the message is sent by Twilio. But what I can do is I can easily use that service. And that makes it easy for me to say, oh, I would like to automate this aspect of sending messages after a little while. And once I've automated it, I could make it much more scalable because I don't have to remember those things anymore. I could even build an interface for it and kind of provide it as a service, but that goes a little bit too far. But let's think about what made this possible. And there are two things making this possible. And again, I'll link to the videos where I describe those things in more depth. One of them is that the service that is provided that I'm using by Twilio is available through a network and it's an easily reusable service. So I can use Twilio service very easily because they provide very nice documentation and they make it easy for me to send messages by using their service. And what they do by doing this is they provide a product for me, right? Their product is they allow me to send messages. They charge me a little bit of money and they allow me to do that easily. And if that's worth for me, then I can do that. So what we see here is that I can easily automate things by using building blocks that others are providing. I don't have to figure out how to send short messages. All I have to do is figure out how to use the Twilio API, which again, just took me a couple of minutes. They have very easy copy paste things that you can use. So it's really, really simple to do. And what we see now is that this 
building block then makes it easy for me to do things. Now let's move one step forward and say, okay, now what does that mean? What that means is we can go one step further and not just automate things, but we can combine things more easily. We can build whole processes where we combine those building blocks and then the processes will use those individual building blocks into something more interesting. One very popular example is Twilio again and Stripe. So Twilio is this message we already looked at in action, which is for receiving short messages. Stripe is a service, an API for payments. And if you think of it, almost all online stores nowadays have some aspect of payment and they have some aspects of notifying users. And now what that means is if you're designing the experience for these online stores, you may want to notify users of certain things and you probably want to process payments. Instead of doing that yourself and figuring out all the ways in which you have to interface with credit card providers and all these complicated things, Stripe allows you to do that very easily, meaning that Designing and building this payment process or the shopping process becomes something that is relatively easy, again, because you can use those building blocks. And what we see here is that these building blocks now, they all have certain capabilities, sending short messages, processing payments. And each of those APIs then that I'm using they provide a language for me to use. So this language is the way how I talk to the API and where I, for example, say, well, please charge this credit card with this amount of money. And then the API does its work and then it will send back a response to me saying, okay, payment processed or no payment was rejected. And by using those languages, I can now easily use those building blocks and build my own processes based on these, so to speak, outsourced capabilities where I don't have to care about how this is happening. All I have to care about is how can I ask for this to happen and then how do I learn about what was the result of my request. Right? And this is something that makes it really powerful to build up things more easily because I don't have to do everything. I just have to do the things that are kind of my core business and the rest is something I can outsource to those building blocks. Now let's go to our last step of what that means. What that means is also that in organizations, innovation becomes much easier. And why does it become easier? Because once you have the culture of building things out of building blocks, then somebody in the organization can say, hey, I have a good idea. I think the shopping process could be made better by just adding this additional step or this additional service or this additional user experience part. And they can take the existing process and just add like this one, let's say, API that they're using and they're still using all the other building blocks and then they can easily create a hopefully better shopping process because the shopping process was designed as being composed out of these building blocks. And I can take that design and tweak it a little bit, add one new part in there and say, look, here's a better shopping process. And then for example, you can also test it and see, is it really better? Does it make customers more, more happy? How is the satisfaction, right? And that, that culture of building things out of smaller units and then making these things changeable more easily as a result, that is something that APIs make very easy. And therefore they are a very good foundation to, to make innovation more easy and faster in organizations. In order to make this happen, what you need is that these building blocks that I'm building on are actually stable, right? That I can say, 
if you're doing the shopping process that way, I can do the shopping process in the same way and tweak it a little bit. And I can depend on the same building blocks that you depend on because each API, and this is my last thing that I'll point out here, each API also is a promise. It's a promise that there is a building block that does a certain thing that I can rely on and I can use this building block to build more things. So what's important here is to understand that an API is not just this capability that I can use, but it's also this promise that this will function like this for a while, probably not forever, but at least for a while. And then of course there's questions of, well, how long does it work? And if it doesn't work anymore, how do I get notified? All these kind of things. That's a topic for a different video. But what we see here is that these building blocks having a certain stability is really important because only then I can start building new things on those building blocks because I can trust them. I can trust that they will be there and that my process will be able to, to execute because these building blocks will work. When we take all these things together, when we think about what APIs are for, for automation, for processes and for innovation. All of these things are possible and all of these things can easily happen in API focused environments because we have this idea of things being designed and used as building blocks. So the, the idea is that whenever I'm using something, I'm actually using a building block like for sending messages, for processing payments and so on. When I'm building something myself, I also build it as a building block because this allows others to use my capability. And then we can have this, this uh, model that I described when I talked about innovation that others can then build on my things and improve on them. And that is really important. And this can only happen because now everybody not just uses building blocks, and builds building blocks, but also building blocks are being shared. It's easy to find out how things are happening. So if I think, oh, this could be done better, then I can find out which building blocks are being used and I can figure out a better way of doing things. And I don't have to build that from scratch, but instead all I have to do is tweak on those things that I want to improve on. And the rest is relatively easy to reuse because it's, re, it's because it's all available as building blocks that I can build on. And that's it. So when you think about what we just discussed in this video, right, it's, it's really mostly about the value that APIs create. And the value that they create is because they encapsulate these capabilities that then become building blocks reusable meaning that I can build automation around them. I can build processes with them and I can also improve processes and do innovation with them more easily because I don't have to start from scratch every single time that I want to change something. And this really is the essence in my mind of APIs. It's not so much the technical aspect, which is important, but the essence is the value that they bring. And the value that they bring is through these three aspects of automation, processes, and innovation. And that's it. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this. This was one more video in my Getting APIs to Work series. If you are interested in APIs, if you want to hear more about APIs, consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching. Until next time, bye.